the cameraman, the personality behind the camera, asked me to convey to you guys the story of how I began in, the, in this industry. And I was thinking about it and it's, you know, we're in 2022 and my story begins in 2007, 2008. During that time, all of America was going through their own financial uh, situations. You know, a lot of people lost their homes, lost their cars and everything. Our family was going through some of those different instances. So being 15, 16 years old around that time, I was forced to grow up really quickly. I was forced to understand the relevance of money and its control over our lives. At that time, I, I'm pretty sure I was like 10th or 11th grade. I was driving 10 miles away from home. That's, how, that's where my high school was. And I had to figure out how to get money to pay for my gas and same as my lunch money at 16 years old. And I feel very blessed that at that young age, I decided to do something about it instead of feeling like a victim. So since I was a kid, I had a fascination with electronics. Around like 10, 11 years old, I would take apart our desktop computers and everything. At that time, around 16, 17, fascinated with like the latest smartphones, the first Samsung Galaxy came out and I started buying and selling electronics on Craigslist. And it wasn't for business purposes, it was for the sole reason of I want to have the latest phone. But I couldn't afford buying it outright, brand new. So I would search on Craigslist for used ones. Because I was so obsessed with this type of, you know, this industry, this niche industry of smartphones, I knew what the new items were, how much they were going for, and I knew how much, at least I saw, how much the used ones were going for. I could easily buy used, and then sell them on eBay, and let's say make 50, 70, 100 dollars. Initially, I bought a phone, and I remember my very first deal, you always remember your first one. And my first deal, I had bought the Samsung Galaxy S. I believe it was like $170. I used it for three, four months, and then I sold it for 240, 250. And I thought, wow, I could continue doing this. I could have the latest tech. I could use it if I bought it cheap enough. And then when it comes time to upgrade it to another, you know, new phone, I could even make a profit, so I wouldn't even be losing. On that note, I ended up going deeper into this industry of buying used, looking for deals. I was living in um, Los Angeles and I was buying phones initially and I went up to buying laptops. I found a way to make money enough to sustain myself, be able to work like five, six hours a week, go to school and everything. Fast forwarding to that point, this is around 2018 and I am beginning the first few days of this business and I realized very quickly that I'm all by myself. And of course, I'm the one that signed my lease. I'm the one that decided to open up this business. Nobody told me to do it. Everybody else around knows that I opened up this business, but no one's offering their help. Of course, no one's forced to. It's no one's responsibility. But I think that was part of my process of being an adult, understanding the way the real world works. I realized very quickly that I had to figure out my way, right? And in the same way that it was scary, it was also empowering because I knew my success and my failure were, were in my hand. I had to assess where I'm strong, where I'm weak, what abilities I have in terms of, am I good talking with customers? Am I good with finding buyers like to these items if I'm trying to sell wholesale? Am I good with repairing items? Where should I spend my time the most? So looking inwards has a lot to do with being self-disciplined, being self-aware, right? Self-aware self was a big thing for me at that time. You know, just realizing that I had to recognize what I'm bad at. It's not, it's not always what you're good at. It's, it's oftentimes what you're bad at, right? Because for a long time, for about a year, year and a half, I was doing things that I shouldn't have been doing in terms of like, let's say, building a website. When my skill was in, you know, the administrative work, understanding the way this chessboard works, right? In, in this specific business. But I was sitting there and handling the items myself. And I was thinking, man, I can't wait till I finish helping out these customers that I'm so blessed to have, right? But I'm handling items that I could be selling, but I'm spending all of my time handling the item, designating it, organizing it, and no time selling it. So that in itself is what forced me to look inwards and be self-aware like, hey, you know what? Is this worth my time? Is my time better served acquiring the items or physically handling the items. That from 2018 until 
today, right, 2022, was a lesson in being self-aware. And that only took place, that only happened because I was forced to figure it out. And when I ran a business that takes multiple people by myself, I was like, hey, you know what? I'm doing acquisition, repairing, selling, marketing, right? And then thinking about the future. I was like, okay, this is really hard, you know, especially when it's a very labor intensive job and you can't even focus. You're, you're sitting here, you're, I have like this, this notepad of all the things I have to do, try to like do micro tasks to feel that sense of achievement and whatnot. And when you're in the moment, you're trying to, you know, accomplish these micro tasks, somebody comes in, now you're out of focus. And I'm very blessed, you know, they do come in, they help me pay my bills, but 30, 40, 50, an hour goes past. And then once you're done, you sit on this chair, you're looking at the tasks, and then you feel physically tired and you have to refocus. So it took a lot for me to figure out who I am, what I'm good at, what I'm not good at specifically, what I'm not good at. And it was only by being real with myself, self-aware, being vulnerable to myself and being okay with not being good at certain things that I was able to delegate those certain tasks that I'm not good at to others who are good at those things. That way it gave me time to focus on the things that I'm strong in. You wanna be successful in your next endeavor or in your existing endeavor? Grab a piece of paper, write down everything you're good at on the left side. Write down everything you're weak at or bad at on the right side. Compare that to your existing business model. What do you need from there to make your business successful? And see if you can delegate those to individuals who are strong in those points that you are weak at. And then from there, you have to be a surfer. You have to be able to ride the waves. You make that first change, you test the waters, and then you make your micro adjustments. And it all starts from what? Being self-aware. So that's it for today, guys. Thank you guys so much for stopping by. And as always, like, subscribe, and comment below. If you like it, thumbs up. If you don't like it, you can put a thumbs down. That's fine, you're not hurting my feelings. All right. Real quick, I forgot to mention, we are posting every Wednesday at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So hit that bell notification, be there, and uh, anything else? Support you. Yeah, I mean, if you want, you can support me. If you don't, I mean, that's your problem. Look inside, okay. <laughs>